Hello, uh, I'm Hisham Mirgani from Department of Obstetric and Gynecology, United Arab of Emirates University, and I am the ambassador for the International Society of Ultrasound in Obstetric and Gynecology. The title of this video lecture is Plan Your Movement and Improve Your Image. It involves basic ultrasound uh, probe movement for improving the quality of your ultrasound image. This lecture might be of interest to those who are starting learning ultrasound. However, it might be of interest to those who are involved in teaching ultrasound as well. Before starting your ultrasound examination, there are important things that you need to do. I could summarize this in four points. Introduce yourself to the patient, assess the risk of the patient, orient yourself to the probe, and orient yourself to the lie and position of the fetus. When introducing yourself to the patient, make sure that she's aware of the nature of your examination. And it's very important to make sure that she's comfortable as well. It is important to assess your patient for certain risk factors, such as hypertension, diabetes, genetic and chromosomal abnormalities, because this might direct the focus of your ultrasound examination. In order to demonstrate these basic ultrasound probe movements today, I'm going to use a Vimedix ultrasound simulator. It's crucial to orient yourself to the probe. There are three ways of doing this. The first, look at the front of your probe. There is always a mark. This could be a protrusion or a colored line or even sometimes a light. This mark should always be facing toward the patient face. The second is when you look at the screen, the maternal bladder should always be at the right side of the screen. And if you look carefully at the screen, you will find there's a mark. It could be a green dot, a blue dot, or even a dot with the word P. Make sure that this is always on the left side of your screen. It's very important to orient yourself to the fetal lie and position, whether the fetus is in a cephalic presentation, breech presentation, longitudinal lie, or transverse lie. For example, in the image you have here, the fetus is in a cephalic presentation, longitudinal lie, with its back toward the maternal back. Therefore, you should expect to find the fetal stomach on the left side of the screen and the fetal heart apex pointing to the left side of the screen as well. Uh, before we start, let us briefly review the three planes in which we examine the fetus. The first plane, which you see in red, is the sagittal plane, which usually uh, divide the fetus into right and left. The second plane, which you see in blue, is the coronal plane, which usually divide the fetus into anterior and posterior part. And then the last plane is the transverse or axial plane, which you see it here in green, that divides the fetus into an upper and lower part. It is crucial to hold your probe perpendicular to the maternal abdominal surface. This will ensure that you are examining the structure underneath the probe. I'm going to demonstrate four important probe movements. These are sliding, rotating, dipping, angling, as well as a combination of some of these movements. The first probe movement that I'm going to demonstrate is sliding. And there are two movement in sliding. The first is sliding along the narrow axis of the probe and the second is sliding on the broad axis of the probe. I'm going to start with the first one, sliding along the narrow axis of the probe. Uh, before I start demonstrating, I would like to point out that during my demonstration, I'm always going to refer for this part of the probe as the narrow aspect of the probe this one here, and the one over here as the broad aspect of the probe. 
The first movement I'm going to demonstrate is sliding on the narrow, which you can see here. So when I slide on the narrow, I always go on the narrow axis of, of the probe, so this way. And it could be in different directions, still on the narrow. We use sliding on the narrow when we want to bring our target to the middle of the screen. So now I'm going to show you practically how we use sliding on the narrow uh, to, imp to get our images. If you look at the fetus now here, the fetus is in breech presentation, the placenta is anterior, but we can only see part of the placenta. To get the whole placenta in the center, we slide on the narrow, just like that. And as you can see in the clip, the placenta now is central. Here is another example of sliding on the narrow and what it does for your image. If you can look at the screen, you can see we're looking at part of the fetal head, but we want our target, which is the fetal head here, to be in the center of the screen. So what we do, we slide on the narrow. And as you can see, as you slide on the narrow, your target comes in the middle. So sliding on the narrow brings your target to the middle of the screen. The next movement will be sliding on the broad axis of the probe. We use sliding on the broad axis of the probe when we want to acquire serial transverse section of the targeted structure. Now I'm going to show you how to slide on the broad axis of the probe. This is how we do it if you look at the probe here. This is sliding on the broad axis of the probe. Again, it could be done in different directions. So now I'm going to demonstrate to you how moving your probe on the broad axis will change the image you have on the screen. If you look at the screen there, we have the abdominal circumference level. If I need to uh, get the heart of the fetus, all I need to do is slide my probe on the broad, just like I'm doing now. And as you can see, I'm moving from one section to another transverse section where I'm getting the heart. The next example that I'm going to use for sliding on the broad axis of the probe is examining the fetal vertebrae on an axial view. If you look at the screen there, I'm at the level of the bladder, so I'm at the level of the pelvis. And if I want to examine the vertebrae, in an axial view, I will only just slide on the broad, just like I'm doing now. And as you can see, I could see the vertebrae in an axial, axial view. And I'm now at the lower lumbar. I could see the two fetal kidneys. And as I move up to the fetal body, I could see the stomach. So now I'm the upper lumbar. And as I move more on the broad, I'm now at the thoracic, where I could see the three ossification center at the heart level. And as I move, even further, you can see I'm moving into the fetal neck. When sliding, keep your probe perpendicular to the abdominal wall. Slide according to the lie of the fetus and always have slow and steady movements. The next movement I'm going to demonstrate is rotation. Now I will demonstrate how to rotate. As you remember, we said the mark on the probe should always be toward the patient face. And in this position, whenever you rotate, you always rotate anti-clockwise. Likewise. And when you go back to the original position, you will rotate back clockwise. So always rotate anti-clockwise. We use rotation when we want to view the target structure in a different plane. I will demonstrate now rotation. If you look at the screen, you, you can see the uh, plane of the abdominal circumference. And you can see that we see, we, or we see the vertebrae in an axial view. Now, if I want to see it in a different view, let us say here in a coronal view, all I need to do is rotate and as you can see, it's now we're looking at the vertebrae 
in a coronal view. Another view of uh, rotation, if you look at the screen here, this fetus is, I'm showing the transverse abdominal plane, and you can see the vertebrae in an axial transverse view. And if I rotate my probe, I will get the spine in a sagittal view, as you can see here. So rotation gives you a different plane of the same structure. The next movement is dipping. We use dipping when we want to view our target in a horizontal plane. Dipping is usually followed by sliding on the narrow. So now I will show you how we do dipping. And dipping is leaning on the narrow aspect of the probe. So I could dip on this side or on the other side. So this movement is dipping. And as I explain in a minute, dipping is always followed by sliding on the narrow axis of the probe. So once you dip, you will need to slide on the narrow axis of the probe. I'm going to demonstrate how we apply dipping in correcting our image. If you look at the screen there, you can see I'm trying to measure the femur, but the femur is not horizontal. So to correct this, I'm going first to dip. But as you can see, once I have, I have by dipping, I have cor corrected the plane of the femur, but now the femur is not in the center. And that's why I need now to slide on the narrow, as we said, to get my target in the middle of the screen, as you can see now. And now I have the femur horizontal and in the middle of my screen. I will try to explain the need to slide on the narrow aspect of the probe following dipping. I will use the example of the femur. In the diagram in front of you, you can see that the femur is, an, is in an oblique view. The reason is that the surface of the probe is not parallel to the femur. Hence, the ultrasound waves take longer time to travel to the left end of the femur compared to the right end. Therefore, the femur appears in an oblique view on the screen. Once you dip on the narrow aspect of the probe, the surface of the probe becomes parallel to the femur. Therefore, the femur will appear in a horizontal view on the screen. However, the left end of the femur will become outside the range of the ultrasound wave. Therefore, it will not appear on the screen. As we mentioned before, to bring the femur to the center of the screen, you will need to slide on the narrow aspect of the probe. Please note that while sliding, you need to maintain your dipping. As you can see now, the femur is in a horizontal view and in the center of your screen. The next movement is angling. Angling is used to adjust an oblique view to a transverse view for accurate assessment and measurement of the targeted structure. So now I will show you how we angle. An angle is actually leaning on the broad aspect of the probe. So on angling, you can either angle towards the patient face like this or in the other direction like this. So this is angling. And as I will explain in a minute, angling is always followed by sliding on the broad axis of the probe. So when you angle, you will need to slide on the broad aspect of the probe, just like this. To demonstrate angling, which you might need in particular when you are trying to obtain a biparietal diameter in a breech fetus. So as you can see here, I am moving my probe on the broad to obtain a biparietal diameter. But the problem here, I'm cutting the head in oblique plane. So I'm unable to obtain that 
transthalamic uh, plane. In order to correct this, as you can see in the screen, I will angle and as I angle, I'm getting a higher plane, so I need to slide on the broad. And now I'm cutting the head equally at the biparietal diameter. I'm going to demonstrate now how to use angling in your ultrasound examination. One of the examples is when you are trying to get the biparietal diameter. If you can see in the Im image on the screen, I'm trying to get the biparietal diameter, but because the the biparietal diameters are not on the same level, I could never get the fast in the middle. So what I need to do here is to angle. But as you can see, once I'm angling, I'm off my focus. And that's why I need to slide on the broad. And now as I slide on the broad, you can see here, I have corrected the image that I need for the biparietal diameter. And here I got the fog cerebri in the middle with the trans ceramic view. Another example is for the angling when you are trying to examine the vertebrae in a coronal view. As you can see here, I, I'm unable to get a proper coronal view. Uh, and I can't get an equal size, size for the fetal body. To correct this, you need to angle first and then slide on the broad and as you can see here, that corrects your plane and you can get a proper uh, coronal view. Now I'd like to show you how you can combine your movements. And in order to do that, uh, I have used the interactive diagram as you can see on the left of the screen. And on the right side is the screen of the ultrasound. Now I'm looking at the biparietal diameter. I want to correct this. It's a little bit oblique. So what I will do first to correct it horizontal, I need to dip. And as we said, dipping is always followed by sliding on the narrow to bring it in the center. But as you can see, I could see part of the cerebellum. To get rid of the cerebellum, I need to rotate, as you can see here. And now I got, by this combination of movement, a nice biparietal diameter. So now I'm going to show you another combination of movements and this is basically to get the fetal face. As you can see, you are at the trans plane. You need from your position now to rotate 90 degrees. So now I'm rotating 90 degrees as you can see to get a different plane. And then I slide on the broad to move in front of the face and there you can see you have the face and if you want to correct uh, the lips and nose if you want to get it better you can rotate even more as you can see there you can see now the nostrils and if I want to get it in the center of the screen I slide on the narrow and if I want to get a good view of the other angle of the lips I angle and slide on the broad and there you got the whole lips. Another example of using a combination of movements is when you're trying to get a sagittal view of the spine. Now, if you need a sagittal view of any O structure, you need to bring it at 12 o'clock. You need to bring a transverse view of that target at 12 o'clock. And that's what we're trying here with the spine. This is a transverse view of the abdomen in order to bring the spine at 12 o'clock I'm going to dip and dip is always followed by sliding and I'm dipping more and sliding dipping and sliding until I get the spine at 12 o'clock once you get a transverse view at 12 o'clock all you need to do now is rotate to get it in a different plane and now I'm just rotating there and as you can see I'm getting the spine in a sagittal view another example of a combined movement is when trying to measure the long bones. I'm going to demonstrate here measuring the tibia. In the screen, you can see I have the femur. If I want the tibia, I will just slide on the broad. And as you can see, the tibia and fibula are seen in a cross section. And to move it from a transverse to a sagittal view, 
All I need is to rotate. And this is what I'm doing now. I'm rotating. And as you can see here, I'm getting the tibia in view. Now to make it horizontal for proper me uh, measurement, I will dip. And then to make it central, I will slide on the narrow. And now I have the tibia in view for measurement. It's very important to improve the quality of your image. And you do that by managing your image, mainly by adjusting the depth, adjusting the focus, adjusting your zoom, and adjusting your gain. And I'm just going to show you an example of how to do that. I'm going to demonstrate how to improve the quality of your image. One of the mistakes is not using the proper depth. As you can see here, I'm looking at the heart with at a depth using a depth of 28 centimeters which all the space below the fetus is waste space. So the first thing I need to decrease the depth up to 12 which is now as you can see the quality of the image is much better and then I will adjust the focus. Third I will adjust my zoom. It is always better to adjust the depth before you zoom on your target. And as you can see here now, I have adjusted the zoom and the image is much better quality. However, the fourth is to adjust your gain. Here you can see the gain is too dark. Maybe I need to make it brighter a little bit, increase my gain. So it, that should be individualized for each organ. And as you can see now, I could see the heart much more properly. In this video, we have demonstrated five basic ultrasound probe movements. By using this movement in combination, hopefully you will be able to assess the structure of the fetus properly and acquire proper views for fetal biometry. Thank you.